Believe in cruelty kind, the road ahead may wind. Must not your promise waver, comforting the weary traveler. Hello, and welcome to Palaversation, Conversations in Palliative Care. As the title suggests, we will be discussing different topics in palliative care. These videos are being created with the sentiment that the medical communities in the different parts of the world are bonded by the same moral duty of treating suffering. They all strive for the same scientific achievements. They all work diligently to attain clinical excellence. This makes us one medical nation, notwithstanding the geographical boundaries. The ups and downs, the successes and failures ought to be shared with each other so that we don't make the same mistakes. Don't spend time in reinventing the wheel and continue to grow together. Efforts have been made to present this information artistically. Hope you enjoy watching these videos and find them thought provoking at the same time. Hello, um, good morning. Um, hope you can hear me. Yes. Yes, yes. We can. We can. It's a good sign that husband and wife are speaking in unison, in perfect harmony. Accidents do happen, doctor. What can we do? <laughs> I agree with you. Neha, um, is your mom joining us in this meeting? No, she has given me the permission to talk to you. And to me as well, hmm. because I ask all the difficult questions. Hmm. Why, where, where, who? Okay, let me ask you the first question. Do you know why we are meeting today? Yes, uh, to go over the tests that my mother had done last week. Right. Um, I don't like the Zoom meetings. You know, can't complain about the traffic. I don't like Zoom meetings either. No human touch, especially when I need to break a serious news to my patient or their families. Oh no, um, that's why I didn't want my mom to be here. And uh, you are alone there. Doctor, um, Neha is on a business trip and her mom is at her sister's place. I see. Well, Neha, what do you know so far about your mom's health? Um, she had breast cancer about seven, eight years back. Uh, she took chemo, had surgery done, and everything was good until <clears throat> she found a lump in her other breast. Mm -hmm. I she think. had x-rays and biopsy both done, right? Right. What did they show? Um, well, Neha and Rajesh, I don't have good news for you. I'm so sorry. I have to deliver this news virtually and not in person. Um, the breast biopsy did show cancer and um, the x-rays showed bone metastasis. Metasta what is that word again? Neha? Neha, are you all right? Um, yeah, um, sorry. Um, can you, could you please repeat what you just said, doctor? Your mother has breast cancer that has spread to her bones and that means that is the meaning of metastasis. Oh, now I know why she has been having back pain. Right, right. And that's why her pain is barely responding to Tylenol and ibuprofen, this ointment, that cream, heating pad. What should we do now? Well, the first step is to let the patient herself know about the diagnosis. Well, this is a terrible diagnosis. 
the thought of cancer coming back it had crossed my mind but i did not expect it to be spreading to her bones doctor is my mom dying well this diagnosis of metastatic cancer does limit a patient's lifespan but it doesn't mean that she is dying actively or at this minute it is happening you know unless she is having a heart attack or a blood clot in her lungs okay things like that metastatic cancer is going to be a chronic serious illness for her well wh- what does it mean what should we expect and how should we manage her pain you both are naturally anxious about this diagnosis um let me show you the typical trajectory of a uh, metastatic cancer let me use this white board and suppose this is the y axis this is the x axis we have time on x axis and functional status on the y axis and now at this point in time she is highly functioning she may remain like this for a long time for for months together she may dwindle a little bit with the side effects of chemo and what not but a point will come in time that she may stop responding to chemotherapy or she may have unbearable side effects from chemotherapy to the point that will not be able to give her any further treatment at that time she may go downhill further very rapidly and uh, she may reach the end point here <clears throat> okay so she is at the beginning of this graph right so so we have lot of time to we truly have a lot of time doctor <laughs> i i do understand this diagnosis is quite overwhelming it makes one sad but i'm here to help you okay um i do not know how much time she has but it is surely in months okay most importantly at any stage of this illness we need to continue to focus on her symptoms continue to keep her comfortable and hence we need to choose palliative care what palliative care means hospice palliative care means euthanasia euthanasia means mercy killing for my mom di- didn't you just say that she is not dying palliative care is not euthanasia for sure palliative care is not mercy killing either and it is not hospice care at all then what then what is what is palliative, palliative care? care exactly palliative care is prevention and management of serious health related suffering serious health related suffering has to be alleviated we doctors mm-hmm. are taught to diagnose and cure diseases mm-hmm. we were not taught to how to identify elements of suffering and relieve it mm-hmm. we have we grew up as doctors mm-hmm. without thinking that we have any responsibility to intervene in emotional or social mm-hmm. issues causing suffering mm-hmm. so palliative care is prevention and management of serious health related suffering mm-hmm. which then has to start when the suffering starts mm-hmm. Exactly. it can be even before the diagnosis mm-hmm. so this is the message mm-hmm. unfortunately globally palliative care started by caring for the dying that's what uh, dame cecily saunders did in exactly. st christopher's hospice yes so that association has stuck mm-hmm. so i say that i practice palliative care oh you do mercy killing could well mm-hmm. be the reaction mm-hmm. maybe not in kerala where it's more known Mm-hmm. but certainly in most of the country mm-hmm. uh, so we will have to keep on highlighting this point mm-hmm. that this is about suffering mm-hmm. this is about needless suffering mm-hmm. and that needs to be treated so i think palliative care it was introduced but i don't think very well explained and i don't know that a lot of physicians and certainly patients understand what it is mm-hmm. in relationship to the more commonly heard hospice of care you know, when we focus on palliative care it's really for 
um, improving patients' quality of life. As such, palliative care means symptom management in mm -hmm. people who have life-limiting conditions. Yes. And keeping bigger picture in sight mm. at all times. Yes. So as a geriatrician, I never take off my palliative care hat. Palliative care is an extra layer of support given to the conventional medical care. What is conventional medical care? Well, the disease-directed therapies such as chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, and nowadays the oncologist will offer immunotherapy as well. Uh, how is this extra layer of support given then? Well, in conventional medical care, the treatment is started and the complications are dealt with as they arise, you know. But in palliative care, the doctors and their teams, they look at the bigger picture and try to gauge the burden of the disease and the suffering thereof. Burden of the disease, meaning how big the cancer is? Or how widely spread it is? Not they only that not only the spread of the cancer or how big the cancer is, but how it is affecting the patient physically, psychologically, socially, and spiritually as well. Aha. Uh -huh. And that's why you need a team. Right. But what kind of team is it? It is an interdisciplinary team. An interdisciplinary team. <laughs> One thing for sure, doctor, whether she has a cancer or not, my mother-in-law doesn't need a discipline. Hmm. She has disciplined us. <laughs> <laughs> you silly. That's a good one. Well, a patient with cancer undergoing toxic treatments like chemotherapy and radiation, they may develop some complications which may be transient but very debilitating. So some of these symptoms or complications can be anticipated some of them could be prevented. And if they should arise at all, they could be treated aggressively if the patient is on palliative care. Um, like how my mom is already having really bad back pain and she's not able to do things she used to do. Right. And she's a very active person otherwise. Yeah, but now she's changing into a depressed woman who is always in pain. I'm... Sorry to hear that, but yes, your mom is having complications from cancer. If a patient develops severe pain from cancer, then it will be treated aggressively with opioids, steroids, radiation, as is indicated. Suppose a patient gets nerve damage from chemotherapy, then she will be evaluated for the use of walker. She will get physical therapy, different medications to treat the neuropathy, that is the chemotherapy-induced nerve damage, so and so forth. And not only that, but if she should get depressed due to the overwhelming diagnosis or treatment itself, then uh, she will get psychological care. She, she can see a psychologist under palliative care. So basically, the interdisciplinary team will address each and every dimension of her personhood. Oh. Wow, that is so poetic every dimension of her personhood. Right. Yeah, it is wholesome. It reminds me of how she gives us her blessing on our birthdays. Hmm. It is a complete blessing. Hmm. What is a complete blessing? Well, she doesn't say only one sentence that most of the people would say like, uh, my blessings are with you. Mm -hmm. she, she says that may your health, wealth and knowledge grow with you. Hmm. It's a little ceremony she holds. Hmm. It's such an affection. And humor as well. Hmm. Oh, yes. She says, especially to Neha, may your pantry be full of high protein and low carb foods. <laughs> In the end, she brings the beautifully lit lamp yes. to us and says that your heart may always be filled with joy. It just feels like palliative hmm. care, touching all the dimensions of personhood. That is beautiful indeed. So let's talk to your mom um, at the earliest, you know, and discuss the palliative care option with her so that she gets the right treatment at the right time. 
And uh, Neha, one important uh, point, I want to bring it up. I know you are the medical power of attorney, but let her be the boss in making all the medical decisions, okay? That makes my burden so much lighter. Well, Neha, your burden will be lighter only if you take your mom's blessing to your heart. <laughs> Having a high protein and low carb food in your pantry. <laughs> you really are silly, aren't you? All right. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. As it is evident from this conversation with Neha and Rajesh, who represent typical family members of a patient, the term palliative care is often confused with lot of other terms. Let us clarify what palliative care is not. Palliative care itself is not hospice care. It is not euthanasia or mercy killing. It is not rationing of medical care. The disease directed treatments, chemotherapy, radiation, etc. are continued under palliative care. This needs to be explained clearly to the patients and their families. Otherwise, patients are afraid to accept palliative care, thinking that they will not get treated for their cancer or other illnesses. Hospice care. It is the palliative care provided at the end of life, when anticipated lifespan is less than six months. Then, what is palliative care? The simplest definition is provided by NCP, that stands for the National Consensus Project in USA. An interdisciplinary medical service provided at any stage of a serious illness. The most comprehensive definition is provided by IAHPC, that stands for International Association of Hospice and Palliative Care. Most importantly, it highlights the extension of care to improve the quality of life, not only that of the patients, but their families and their caregivers as well. Both of these definitions use a common term that is a serious illness, an illness which is profound enough to affect the quality and quantity of life both and may strain the caregivers excessively. What are the serious illnesses? Palliative care term is linked mostly with cancer, but if this list is reviewed, one will notice that neurological diseases occupy a large portion of this list, and many non-malignant diseases fall into this category as well. As you must have understood by now, it takes a village to practice palliative care. So, create one. Hope you find this episode of Palliversation heart-provoking and helpful. Please join us again. Thank you for your time and attention. This is Bhagyashree Barlinge from Phoenix, Arizona. Have a nice day.